Welcome to this little video where we're going to have a look at the new sidechain compression functionality in ACID Pro 10. Currently this is in beta. For those of you that have a, a license of ACID Pro 10 already, you can head on over to the community forums at magix.info. There's a link there. There's a, sorry, there's a thread there in the forum where you can access the beta. If you don't have ACID Pro 10, but you're interested, maybe you've got an earlier version of ACID Pro, all you need to know is that this will be coming into the next release of ACID Pro, I've been reliably informed. So it should be with us within the next few weeks, assuming there's not any, you know, last minute bugs in that beta. ACID's been around for 15 plus years now, and it's one of those things that um, has recently in the past few years been bought by Magix, who are now um, fully supporting ACID. And they've been adding some like much needed quality of life functionality into the product over the past couple of years. For example, 64-bit support, VST3 support. Uh, next on the list for them, thankfully is sidechain compression which a lot of people have been asking for so that allows us to route the output from one audio track into uh, a compressor on another audio track and fundamentally what you need to have in your DAW to be able to do that is the concept of audio routing which is not something we used to be able to do built directly into ACID Pro there were VSTs that you could get that worked around that issue such as a, a VST that would take the audio and route it into um, another plugin that you had on another channel uh, and it was a little bit clunky and actually that's kind of how it works within ACID Pro 10 but it's not clunky which is the good thing and it's fundamentally built into uh, ACID Pro now as opposed to re relying on those VSTs. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at how you can implement that in a project. Um, and what we have in this project at the minute, this is one that I've just set up and been playing with, is we've got a synth string, which sounds a little bit like this. And we want to have that sitting on top of a bass drum and I've got a um, a a Psytrance bass here, it sounds a little bit like this. And what we want to do is we want to have that acid lead kind of pumping in time with the bass. Now previously, like I say, there were plugins to do it, or maybe you would have um, something like a volume envelope to manually go in and put it in, or there's other plugins out there that will help you kind of bump um, the volume or the filter on a track up and down, such as LFO Tool or um, Shaper Toy, I think is another one. Um, but we, we don't want to do that because we want the flexibility to be able to program in within our timeline the events that are going to make that we're going to feed into our compressor so we can basically shape that sound on the timeline. How to do that? So this, uh, this is a MIDI track. And um, I've got a soft, soft synth on there, which is rooting into the soft synth audio bus at the bottom. So if we have a look at this, I've put a, a compressor on here, which is currently not enabled. Uh, and this compressor is interesting because it actually, or like a lot of compressors actually, um, it allows multiple audio inputs and that's fundamental like acid pro needs to be able to understand that plugin has the capability to, to accept multiple audio inputs and this one does so um, let's go through it i won't use this one this is just a preset uh, we'll go and add another one just to show you the, the workflow of setting this up so we're going to add a compressor this is just the efx compressor that comes bundled with acid pro 10 and i believe this has been in acid for at least a couple of versions maybe it's available in eight but certainly next and ten it was available in and this ui hasn't changed here actually there's been this sidechain functionality here but it's it's not worked up until now because actually the fundamental as i mentioned earlier the fundamental audio routing was not there so to to access that we need to have another track that we want to be our, our source for the second audio input on the compressor. 
which we have, and I've labeled these bass drum side, and I've got a stutter one as well as, a, as an example. So in the audio plugin window, we've got the chain at the top. And if we right click on a plugin in that chain, we now get another option here for side chain input. So we'll pick the bass drum side. And the only other thing you need to do is to have side chain selected to external. Uh, so we've done that. Let's play and see what we get now. Let's actually disable the drum because we don't want that for the time being. So you can hear that that's actually being affected already if we disable this. That's what it sounds like with and without. So what else can we do within this plugin? Well, it's actually a fairly decent uh, compressor from a side chaining point of view. Uh, it's probably not the best um, compressor plugin in the world, but it's for this purposes, it's perfectly great and actually offers quite a lot of flexibility. So within here, we can just play that again. We can actually listen to the, the sound that's being fed in to the compression signal by hitting the speaker button. We can hear that bass there. And from there, we can also, um, we can add a filter to that signal that we want to drive into the compressor. So maybe we only want to use the kind of the high end of it. I don't know. But it certainly gives you that option to listen to it and figure out what's happening with the sound. Um, right, so actually, I'm not, I'm not going to use this one anymore. I'll use this one, this, uh, these settings that I set up earlier. And what I've done here is I've actually put the input to another channel, which I've got here as a, it's kind of like a stutter track. Kind of fits better with the Psytrance bass and uh, bass drum. So this speaker is um, really useful for kind of shaping your sound. Other plugins give you that option, such as um, FabFilter Pro C gives you the option to audition the input signal as well, which is nice. I really like that. So yeah, that's that. It's pretty decent. Um, the other thing we get here as well, by just the mere vir virtue of his doing, uh, selecting another track to be our sidechain input means we also get some control on that track to, to adjust the audio signal. So if we have a look at the plugin, so if, yeah, if we have a look at the, the track effects for this, we'll see that we actually have the sidechain sender which actually gives us yet another filter that you can perform on that track. And then the the important thing to remember here is the audio is sent from this VST. So anything after, after that that you might have on that um, specific chain won't be sent into your compressor. So that's just something to remember there. So what else? Now, what I have noticed, I don't know whether this is just me and my very old PC, it's like getting on for nine years old now, um, but what I have found is it, it was better to route this compression signal into an audio bus. Um, I don't know why, but whenever um, I just did a user compressor with this not routing through to another audio bus, is that I was getting very... Um, clicky sound. So again, I don't know whether that's just because of my buffer size on my audio card, but this seemed to fix the problem. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got um, the ability to set a uh, sidechain input. Uh, in terms of this plugin, um, maybe you've seen this before, but we've got like, say they've got the option to audition that, that compression signal coming in. And as well as that, we can also adjust the sidechain sender on your sidechain compression source. And that's pretty much it. It's really simple. So let's just keep those muted. Oh no, I don't need to mute those. I've got the I've got my buses muted. And there we go. We've got a kind of pumping side strike. 
If you've got any questions about Acid Pro uh, or anything like that, you can either pop them into the comment section below or, as I mentioned at the start of the video, head on over to the community site, magix.info. Have a look under the audio section and there's a forum there just specifically for Acid Pro. Hope to see you there. Bye.